Hello, my name is Ian Williams. I'm one of the inventors of the Williams Warren Personal Brewery, and this is how you make beer in seven days like a modern brewery. So what you need along with your brewery are some ingredients, some extract and yeast, some sundry equipment, both of which come with a brewery, and some extra items from your kitchen. The first thing you do is clean the brewery with some specialised detergent. You then give the brewery a good rinse with water to remove the detergent. The next step is to sanitise the brewery with sodium percarbonate. This is a no rinse sanitizer, so you do not need to rinse this off with water. Once the brewery has been cleaned and sanitised, you can then add the ingredients. First, you rehydrate the dry yeast in water. Next, you dissolve the liquid malt extract in hot water and add that to the brewery. You can then add the dry malt extract and stir it well to help dissolve it. At this stage, you may add any extra flavours from hops or specialty malts. In this example, we're adding aroma hops to a French coffee press and adding the strained liquid to the brewery. You then top up the brewery to the 23 litre mark. This is the equivalent of six US gallons. Once a vessel is full, put the seal on and close the lid. Next you attach the rehydrated yeast in the sediment bottle and open the vessel valve. This is the start of the fermentation process. Then put the insulation on the sediment bottle, set the variable pressure relief valve for the carbonation you want, turn the brewery on and set the temperature you desire. We recommend 23 degrees Celsius or 73 degrees Fahrenheit for ales, 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit for lagers. Over the following 24 hours, you will see lots of bubbles starting to rise in the sediment bottle and the pressure will build up on the vessel as the yeast carbonates the beer. The pressure will release itself as per your setting on the variable pressure relief valve. All you need to do is check that the valve is releasing at the right pressure and if not, make a small adjustment. On day two, you will still see a lot of activity in the sediment bottle as the brew continues to ferment. Then after four days for your typical ale and six days for lagers, the yeast will be quite settled and fermentation is complete. The next step is to change the temperature to a cold setting to help settle the yeast and form some chill haze, both of which will be removed during the next stage. 12 hours later, when all the beer is cold, the final processing step is to clarify the beer. Then close the vessel valve, remove the sediment bottle, and give the valve a good rinse with water. Then dump the naturally settled yeast down the drain and give the bottle and bowl a good rinse. Put the bowl back under the brewery and then fill the sediment bottle with beer foam by pushing the tap back. This removes all oxygen from the bottle. And put the sediment bottle back on the brewery. Next we add some clarification agent to the 100ml cylinder and add that to the clarification pot on the brewery. Then ensure the CO2 cylinder in the tower is set at a low pressure of about 1.25 bar or 18 psi and then release pressure out of the brewery so that the vessel is half a bar or 7 psi lower than the CO2 cylinder. Then turn the three-way valve on the control panel to the pot and force the clarification agent into the beer for 10 seconds. Then close the three-way valve. Next, give the pot a rinse with water and blow that through the line into the beer as well for a few seconds and then turn the gas cylinder pressure to the brewery vessel. Then open the vessel valve and put the insulation on the sediment bottle. 
24 hours later, you will find a new amount of sediment has settled out of the beer and into the sediment bottle. However, in most instances, the beer will still not be quite clear enough, so you need to close the vessel valve and clarify one more time. Once again, add the clarification agent to the pot, put the lid on the pot, release the pressure out of the brewery, blow the clarification agent into the beer, give the pot a quick rinse, and then connect the CO2 bottle pressure to the tank. and slowly open the vessel valve again. Put the insulation back on the sediment bottle. Then after another 24 hours, which totals six and a half days for ales and eight and a half days for lagers, you'll see a second sediment layer in the bottle and clear beer at the top. It is now ready to consume. Close the vessel valve once more. Remove the sediment bottle. Give the valve a good rinse with water and then dump the sediment again. Give the bottle and the bowl a good rinse with water and then put them both back on the brewery. But this time, leave the valve closed. Once the beer is ready, you can either drink it directly out of the brewery through the draft beer tap, or you can bottle the beer using the counter pressure bottler, or keg the beer using the counter pressure fittings. Place a bottle in the bottler, and then pull the handle towards you to introduce CO2, and then push the handle away to introduce beer. You need to adjust the speed of the fill, so that no foam forms on the beer surface. You do this by adjusting the variable pressure relief valve. For a 500ml or 18 fluid ounce bottle, you want to time it to approximately a 45 second fill. This will ensure that no CO2 is lost out of the beer. When the bottle is full, put the bottling valve in the closed position Remove the bottle and put the top on it. To keg a beer, first connect the beer line from the brewery to the keg and then add some CO2 pressure from a gas cylinder. Then attach the variable pressure relief valve and open the valve at the back of the draft beer font so that beer can flow into the keg. Once the keg is full, you can dispense it through a kegerator or similar device and you can get on with the next brew. Right, there you go. So that's how you make cold, clear, perfectly carbonated, professional quality beer in seven days, just like a modern brewery.